Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have square root of 15 minus square root of 14 and square root of 14 minus square root of 13. And we're going to find out which number is larger. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an approach using functions. And then at the end, we're going to be taking a look at the graph. So let's go ahead and consider the following function. f of x equals square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. First of all, notice that this function is defined for x greater than or equal to 0, since if x is greater than or equal to 0, then x plus 1 is already going to be greater or equal to 0. And if you check the smallest value here, for, for the x smallest x value, actually, f of 0 is going to be 1. All right, great. So that's our domain. Let's go ahead and differentiate this function because my goal is to find a maximum or a minimum and then go from there. Now, when you differentiate the radical function, what is the square root of you differentiated, right? And as you, you should know from calculus, if you've ever taken it or if you learned about it, it's the derivative of the inside. It's the chain rule, by the way. u prime divided by 2 times the square root of u, which is the same function. So in this case, we have x plus 1 inside. So the derivative of x plus 1 is going to be 1. And this is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 1. Great. And the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Now, why is taking the, French, uh, the derivative important here? We want to take a look at the, the function's behavior. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it both? So on and so forth. Let's make a common denominator. And to make a common denominator, multiply the first one by square root of x and the second one by the square root of x plus 1. And then the bottom is just going to be the product of 2 times square root of x plus 1 and the square root of x altogether. We don't have to repeat the 2, right? Now, one thing I want you to notice, actually a couple things. First of all, uh, this is a positive quantity if x is greater than 0. If x is 0, this is undefined, so you don't want that. But other than that, uh, this can be, uh, I mean, x is going to be defined for x is greater than 0, or f prime is going to be defined. So we can safely say that this is a positive quantity. Great. What about this one? Well, x plus 1 is greater than x, and the square root of x plus 1 is greater than square root of x. So it is a negative quantity. And what does that tell you? A negative divided by a positive is going to be negative. So derivative of f is always going to be negative, which means f is, f is always decreasing. So this means we don't have a maximum or a minimum point. f is always going to be decreasing. Like what? Like this or like that? We're going to find that. Now here's what I want you to know real quick. We're not going to get into details, but you can easily do that. If you differentiate f prime one more time, you're going to get the second derivative. You're going to notice that the second derivative is positive. You can definitely check this for yourself. This means that f is concave up. Remember, the second derivative gives you concavity, which means our function is like this. But since it's decreasing, it's not going to be like this, but it's going to be more like this. Make sense? So that kind of gives you a, an idea about the shape of the um, graph of this function. All right, now, what is that supposed to mean? We have a function that has the value of 1 at 0. It is defined, not the derivative, but the function itself. And then the function is decreasing. Do you think that function is going to intersect the x-axis? Let's think about it. In order for our function to intersect the x-axis, the y value has to be 0. And this is the y value. So f of x equals square root of x plus 1 minus x. Can this ever be equal to 0? If that's true, that means so square root of x plus 1 is equal to square root of x. That means x plus 1 is equal to x. That means 1 equals 0. But that's impossible. Therefore, our function is not going to have an x-intercept. So it's going to stay above the x-axis. How did I know that it's going to be above? Well, if you think about it, square root of x plus 1 is always greater than square root of x. Therefore, our expression for f of x is always going to be positive. So at the end, we're going to take a look at the graph, and you're going to have a better idea. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the values that this function can take. So our function is square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. Let's go ahead and take a look at the value of 
f of 14, right? f of 14 is just going to be square root of 15 minus the square root of 14. So what? Let's go ahead and take a look at f of 13 now. That is going to be the square root of 14 minus the square root of 13. And guess what? Those two are the numbers that we're trying to compare. Let's not lose sight of the original problem. The problem was asking for the comparison of these two numbers. And how can you compare them using this idea? We have a function that is decreasing, right? What is that supposed to mean? It means that as x values increase, the y values decrease. So it's kind of like from left to right. Again, as x increases, y decreases. Therefore, f of 15, I mean f of 14, I, I guess that's what I was trying to say, not f of 15. f of 14 is going to be less than f of 13 because f is decreasing. Make sense? So when you have a function that is decreasing, obviously, the value, obviously, it's not like that, but you get the idea. As x values increase, you're going to get smaller y values. Make sense? Okay. What does that tell you? It tells you exactly what we're looking for, right? f of 14 is less than f of 13. But before we go ahead and write it in the inequality format, let's go ahead and consider something else. Before I show you the graph, I want to show you one more thing. So we said that f of 0 is equal to 1. And I want to take a look at the limit of this function. Why? I'll tell you why in a little bit. As x approaches infinity, what is the limit of f of x? Well, what is f of x? Well, f of x is the square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. It's kind of like the type of limit problem where we have infinity minus infinity, and that's not 0 because not all infinities are the same. We're going to be looking at the growth here. And to find this, evaluate this limit, we're going to take advantage of conjugates. So conjugates are very helpful with, um, you know, problems with radicals. So we're going to go ahead and multiply and divide by this expression right here. And the limit is not going to change because we're not evaluating the function, we're taking the limit. So now the top part from difference of two squares is going to become x plus 1 minus x, and the bottom is just going to stay as is. But notice that that is always a positive quantity. Actually, it's a sum, which is nice. And the x cancels out. Now, as x approaches infinity, this guy is going to approach infinity. This is going to approach infinity. And we don't care at what rate or which one is faster because their sum is also going to approach infinity. Infinity plus infinity is infinity, but infinity minus infinity does not equal zero because it's not a number. So this limit is going to be zero because this is a constant and the bottom is approaching infinity. One over infinity is going to approach zero. What does that tell you? We start at y equals one and then as x approaches infinity, y values approach zero. We can go ahead and take a look at the graph now real quick and then that'll make much more sense when I show you the graph. Here you go. As you can see here, f of zero is one and as x approaches infinity, our function is or y values are going to approach zero, which means our function is decreasing and f of 14 is less than f of 13. So the larger number in this case is going to be square root of 14 minus square root of brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.